Okay, so once I have a section taken from my masking model in Revit, I can actually uh, export that as a PDF file and convert it to a JPEG. And then uh, simply what I did is I sent it to myself uh, as an image file in email. And um, the next step then is to open up this program called Force Effect Icon for it looks something like that little dude right there. Uh, Force Effect is um, a reaction simulation software from Autodesk. And what I can do, I mean, I can take a picture of something and begin to trace um, essentially what would be beams or structural members, or I can also go to my photo album, camera roll, select the section that I sent to myself, and at this time now I have the actual section of the project that I'm working on. And this is just an image file. It doesn't really have any particular scale to it yet. But I've given myself some basic dimensions to the side when I exported the section, so I kind of know what I can start working with. So I'm going to use this tool right here to begin placing some structural members. So if you notice my first one just comes up as sort of 5.8 feet. And I know that that dimension is actually 24 feet. And now everything from there on out sort of scales accordingly. And I'm just going to quickly trace the key structural elements of the design. And if you notice, it'll also give you an inference uh, or a reference line when I've got things lined up correctly. I'm going to go ahead and put two pin connections at the bottom. And if you notice, even though I have this currently put together, this is still sort of... Um, not uh, this is sort of an indeterminate structure. Um, so what I need to do is add in one cross brace at a certain location to make everything rigid. Um, and then uh, this will allow, um, I don't want to do it like that though, this will allow the software to solve for the overall calculations. And you can see once I have this icon, I know I can start adding in forces and get reactions. So I'm primarily going to be working with live loads, or, or with distributed loads, thinking of live load and dead load combinations on the project. And if you notice, um, right now as I click and drag, it's going to create a force arrow and a distributed load. That would be more of a wind load right there, so I'm actually not going to want to do that. Select delete, select that piece, force, distributed load, there we go. And I'm going to drag that across, and then I'm going to select the lower piece and, dis and slide that distributed load all the way across the interior space. And then I'm going to select the pounds per foot mark and set that interior to 250 pounds per square foot. And, you know, of course, I'm sort of thinking about um, the structure running in both ways, so, you know, maybe that is taking... Um, 10 feet in each direction, so it's a fairly large load. The next thing we're going to do, if you notice the diagram itself, it's being built as I add in forces, my reactions are. So uh, those are going off the page right now, but one of the things I can do if I click and hold, I should be able to get this little diagram right here, which sort of scales everything to fit inside of my space. Try that one more time. There we go. So that way I can kind of keep it. It's essentially scaling the reactions down visually so I can see them. Let's add in another load right across here. That's going to be about 100 pounds per foot on that exterior deck. Let's slide that all the way across. And then I want to add a roof load as well. I'm going to use 100 pounds per foot again on it. So again, to bring up that number, I'm just clicking on the pounds per square foot icon. There it goes, pounds per square foot. I was having a little trouble selecting that particular member. And then I'm going to click on the lower grip and bring that across. And so essentially, that builds 
all of the reactions for this entire case. And the next thing I want to do is actually create the calculations for all of the members. So I'm going to click the Calculate button at the top. And this is going to create a report. So there's my overall reaction analysis. But then as I come down, you'll notice it's going to break down the reactions for individual elements, like element AB. So that's the vertical column. Element BE. And in particular, in this case, I'm, I'm really interested in this beam right here, beam CD. So let's see if we can find it. There it is, beam CD. So this gives you the shear fo force and moment diagram, and I can start looking at the maximums and minimums on that. And I can use that as a starting point rather than a simple rule of thumb to begin sizing beams and sizing structure. So the last thing that I want to do with this is I want to get this off of my iPad and back onto my computer. So to do that, I'm simply going to click the send by email, and I'm just going to send this to me. and then the send button, and that is headed to my computer so I can use it for analysis.